What is going on guys? Jack here and welcome back to episode 14 of The Rise of a Nation here with SV Edmonton and today we're back once more. Last episode we had the big continental competitions, today we're back with a little bit of a league update. It's early September, you can see our club overview here. Interesting little bit of a note, Kevin Deshays, officially now considered our key player which I think is mental. He's good but we've not really played him that much. He turns 18 pretty soon and, well, to be fair to him, he's improved a lot and he does look very, very solid. I just feel like it's mad that a player can be listed as the key player without really playing for the first team at all. I've talked this year about wanting to slowly bed him in. Um, I feel like between now and the end of the season, he is going to be fast-tracked through. Uh, if we just look actually at the Canadian Premier League media Dream 11, he is in the Dream 11. And actually, we have started to have a few more players appear in this. You can see Kay, who we signed last episode, um, makes his way into the team. The Canadian international, a player who I really like, I didn't think the natural fitness was going to concern me. It has proven with a fairly congested fixture schedule to be a little bit annoying. The fact that sometimes he just isn't fit to play between games. But I'm willing to put that past him for the, the quality that he has. You can see we also have Soria in the team, uh, Chung in the team. Edwini Bonsu, who is back from injury, finally is back in the team. He's now up to six stamina, everyone. It's, it's the redemption arc is beginning. Of course, his stamina dropped significantly after his recent hip injury, which left him out for three months. Also worth noting, Nick Daly, the 19-year-old striker, right up there in the Media Dream 11. This guy has improved a ton. He's been finding some great form for us. You can see six goals in seven games since we recalled him from his loan. I think that's proved to be the best decision of the window. He has been in the league for us, just top draw so far. And while speaking of the league, since you were last here um, and we lost in the North American League, we've been able to refocus on the Canadian Premier League. And we currently sit top of the dog pile, unbeaten in the uh, the spring, or not the spring split, the autumn split, which is absolutely fantastic. We really have found some form. You can see the first game here against Forge FC, away from home, never a freebie. Won this 2-0. Nick Daly with his first goal, which was a very, very good one. He then had a penalty opportunity that he missed, but, well, he stood up to his fears. He went up and he took the second penalty of the game and he banged it in, showing real maturity. And despite a late consolation by Chris Nanko, Forge were unable to find a way back into the game. So, yes, a very, very good result to start things there. In the next game, we took on Halifax, of course, the team who have been a massive fawn in our side this year. We beat them 6-0. Um, to be honest, that result massively flatters us. Sarkaria was the standout performer in this game. He grabbed a hat-trick in the first half, including one from the penalty spot. Some nice clinical finishing. I think the keeper could definitely come into questioning uh, on a few of these goals. Um, also, Lincoln Joseph scored two fantastic free kicks. The second one was 100% saveable. But we're not going to complain, are we? Um, and then Tommy Amiobi also picked up a goal in this game in the 55th minute. We went back to the Sarkaria uh, Amiobi partnership, and it worked wonders here. A very, very convincing result. Pretty much a sellout crowd as well. And uh, well, the fans, they got their money's worth, didn't they? Anyway, the next game we had was a 2 1 win. It was against Cavalry FC. Nick Daly with two goals very early on in this game. And, uh, well, Daly's just been in fantastic form. He's just been scoring goal after goal after goal. I feel like he really has been the standout player in games that he started. I think he scored in the last five consecutively. It wasn't any different here. He grabbed two. Uh, Telfer with some really nice assists as well. We were hit on the counter late on in the game as Cavalry got uh, a goal back, but we did hold on for the win in the end. They had a sending off early on in this game, which really dictated the play. Anyway, second to last game was against Pacific FC, and as you can see, the last two games that we've had were against Pacific FC. Two 3-1 wins. The first one, a good little performance this one. The first goal was an insanely good goal. It was Duck with the ball to Lincourt Joseph out on the right-hand side. And he just absolutely sledgehammered it home. Mick Daly then added uh, from the penalty spot for us, which put us in a really good position, two goals up. They did pull one back. And at that point, I was feeling perhaps a little bit nervous. Uh, but in the 79th minute, we did grab our third of the game. It was very, very scrappy. It was a free kick from the byline, whipped in. The goal was eventually given to their goalkeeper as an, off, uh, as an own goal. I don't know if it actually was an own goal, but we'll take it at the end of the day. 
And then, as I mentioned, we took them on again, this time away from home. We flew over to Vancouver Island, and, uh, well, it was a lovely game, this one. A 3-1 win. Edwini Bonsu, his first game back from injury, grabbing two goals in the space of two minutes for us. Was absolutely great to see the right winger come back and really reintroduce himself, having been out for such a long time and with him being a player who did turn 30 during the season. It was always a little bit of a concern, I guess. You know, how was he going to recover? How was he going to bounce back? Bounce back, he certainly did in this game. Some really good performances. And uh, yeah, another win there in our eighth consecutive win so far in this autumn split, as I mentioned. You can see uh, Randy here. He's a very, very good right winger. The injury has set him back a little bit. I've talked about his stamina, but other elements of his game have been impacted. Still, really great to see him come back. And you can see those two goals he scored are actually his first two goals of the season. So... Today we're going to be taking on Forge. They are currently fourth in the league. Just so you can see how things are looking. We are pretty deep into the autumn split now. We're top of the league. We are, well, four points clear with three games in hand. So a win here. And I don't want to speak too preemptively, but I'd say at that point we have won the autumn split. You can see last season 35 points was enough to win it all. We're really not that far off the total at the halfway point of our season. Um, of course, 18 games in this stage. So if we can get a win today, I think next episode we'll come back for the playoff game, which we already know is going to be against Halifax, a team who are down in the league struggling a little bit. You can see, um, obviously, we've got some transfer stuff going on. I have got one little dilemma. That is the fact we have a 40% of profit from next sale clause with Justin Yard with Valor FC. We've agreed to buy it out for 235000 The question really becomes, do I see him being sold on for a profit? And I think they massively overpaid. I don't know if you'll ever go for more. And I'm very, very tempted to take this sum of money. Because in order for us to get that kind of sum of money from him being sold, he would need to go for in excess of a million pounds. And I just don't see it happening. So you know what? We're going to sell up that clause. We do receive £235,000 for it, which I think is pretty good. I didn't talk about it before, but if we just look at the season preview here... Or rather, transfers is probably a better thing to look at. You can see some of the transfer dealings that have gone on during this window. There's been some pretty big ones. Um, notably, Mike Petrasso has gone to New York Cosmos. So he has fled Canada, the Canadian international. He's decided he's too good for us and he's made the move. Uh, you can see Halifax here made a big move for Boscovich from Toronto 2. 22-year-old centre-back. Looks very solid. They paid £110,000. His form so far has been... Perhaps questionable to say the least. You can see the various other transfers going on here. York 9 making moves for Alejandro Torres um, from Mexico. A very, very good kind of defensive midfielder at 25 years old. You can see there's been lots of players kind of moving in and out. The sums of money we're talking about aren't too crazy. But when compared to the money that was spent last year... It is quite the contrast, isn't it? So we'll be interesting to see if these kind of numbers are sustainable. I anticipate the Canadian Premier League to become a selling league of sorts. We'll see how that plays out over time. You can see in terms of the league, top goal scorer is Sarkaria. Daily, though, really not far behind. And I feel like these two guys have started to develop a little bit of a partnership of their own. And for that reason, they are going to be starting for us today. In terms of the rest of our team, Opare is going to be playing that right centre-back position. Of course, joined us during last episode on a free transfer. Four games played for him. He's looked very, very solid for us. Elsewhere on the team, we've of course got Soria, Temguia making up our back three. Connor James in goal. Still eight leadership. Maybe it'll, can, we, can we send him on another leadership course? Apparently it wouldn't be worth it. That's a shame. Uh, the rest of the team, though, we've got senior playing centre defensive mid. We've had a few injuries to speak of. Um, David Edgar's out with a double hernia, basically missing two months. That is a concern when a player who's 33 misses such a large chunk of football. That is going to impact, I think, his physicals quite badly. He's only got three to four weeks to recover, but they have already started to tumble, as you can see. Um, I guess Opare, the signing, has turned out to be a pretty useful one. The other one that's been a real concern has been Marcelin, who has, um, well, you can see he's been out with a calf strain for quite a long little while. It feels longer than perhaps it has been at only two weeks. The fixtures have been coming thick and fast, but he's missed a fair few. It does leave me a little bit concerned. He's got one year left on his current deal. Part of me wonders if maybe I can talk him into becoming a staff member and retiring at the end of the year. Um, I really, really like Marcelin. 
but, and it's a bit of a big but, he's not quite good enough. Like His league form's been great, he's performed very, very well, but I feel like come midway through next year, I'm just not going to be playing him at all, and Senior's probably going to be the man getting the nod. Uh, for today's game, we're going to give Telfer and also um, our right-sided player, Edwini Bonsu, rests just you know for the sake of it. Um, that we're going to bring in Osorio and Chung, give them a bit of rotation. Marshall and Kay are going to play in the centre. As I said, Daly and Sarkaria up top as well. Sarkaria still, again this year, against all odds, has been our standout man. 11 goals, 5 assists, a 7.47 average rating. And there is still, I think, 9 league games left to play, so he could well um, surpass his total from last year, although Daly is pretty hot on his heels in that regard. Plenty of options on the bench as well. We've got players like Mortotzi, Kareem Moses, Lincoln Joseph, Deshays, uh, Zebi, uh, Tommy Amiobi is going to be there as well. Worth noting, uh, the Duck uh, is on international duty. Yeah, he's been called up for Haiti. He should be back in about a week. So we're without him today, we're going to have to see what we can do. And whilst the Duck hasn't been scoring a ton, I feel like what he has done alongside Nick Daly is really preoccupied defenders. Um, you can see he's got three assists as well, so he's been chipping in with the assists, and he's kind of been a bit of a creative force in the team. But anyway, let's get into today's game. It's against Forge FC. You've seen our team selection. It's a very, very strong squad at our disposal, despite a few injuries to you know some of the more senior members of the team. In terms of their team, they're going to go with a 4-4-1-1. Big players to note for them, I think, are probably uh, Cissé here, who's a very, very good Senegalese centre defensive mid. Also, Kyle Becker. Solid centre attacking mid. And actually, this guy, whose name I'm going to get wrong, we'll just call you Dave, um, he's pretty solid as well out on the left. They've got quality, have forged. They're in fourth for a reason. Looks like today they are going to try and hit us on the break. And, well, let's see if we can withstand the test that we're about to endure. Um, I'm hoping that we're going to really just hit the ground running in this game, get a nice, comfortable win. Our league form, as of late, has been superb. You might have noticed just looking through the recent results. Defensively, we've not been keeping that many clean sheets. We've not been impenetrable. It really has been the goals of Nick Daly and Sarkaria kind of propelling us forward in this nice, rich reign of form that we've been in. And we'll hope that we can maintain it here today, although it's going to be tricky, you know. There is no freebie game, and two wins, 3-1 against Pacific, who are down there in the league, and unconvincing 2-1 against Cavalry. Yeah, I mean, it, I know we beat Halifax quite convincingly, but with the exception of that, the games have been hard fought. They have been tricky games. Obviously, it's great that we're capable of grinding out wins regardless of how you know dominant we are in the games, but that probably isn't sustainable. I mean, the good news is that we've built such a cushion with this kind of runner form and we have just been grinding out results that a result today would leave me in a position where I feel a lot more comfortable just rotating the team a lot. And well, we've got a chance here. Sarkaria going to cross it into Daly, who's there. And uh, well, they link up Daly with his 15th of the season. Sarkaria, turning provider. And I feel like between these two guys, we've got two players who really can work for us. Of course, Duck being on international duty has kind of put us in a situation where Sarkaria and Daly need to play alongside each other. What a lovely finish that is. The ball into the box as well was superb. We go a goal to the good within the first 12 minutes, exactly what we want to see. I will say that I feel like with this recent dominance uh, in the Canadian Premier League, it's it's making me feel good because it makes it feel like we really are making progress uh, you know, on and off the pitch in terms of the players we're bringing in and how well they're playing. And we're going to have to do that. The overall quality of Canadian football has got to take a few steps up in the coming years if we really want to challenge continentally. And the, the fact that we are playing as we are in the league and the fact that we I think we were largely competitive against a very formidable Costa Rican side last time out certainly gives a reason for optimism that in the current the coming years, you know, the Canadian Premier League will climb up the ladder of kind of domestic competitions within uh, North America and hopefully we'll find ourselves in a position sooner or later um, where we are, you know, the big team on the block, the team and the league that can really go head-to-head -head with Liga MX and MLS. That's got to be the aim, I feel like, here, longer term, is to really find ourselves in a spot where the Canadian Premier League is unquestionably the third biggest league in North America. The prospect of throw overthrowing Liga MX and MLS seems like a lifetime away, but 
Who knows? Maybe it can happen. Maybe with time. Maybe with patience. Obviously, the blessing with this series is the fact that we can get through seasons so quickly in terms of number of episodes. It's not unreasonable to get through maybe a season every week and a half, realistically. Um, so over the summer, you can expect to hopefully see us climbing up and up the ladder. And while we've got another chance here, Marshall off the woodwork. Not a bad effort by him there. We're looking pretty good. Chung's been a little underwhelming on the right. I'm tempted to bring on Edwini Bonsu. And if they'd scored there, I definitely would have bring, bring uh, would have been bringing him on. I'm going to go with a double change in the wide area. We're going to go with Edwini Bonsu, who's still building up some match fitness. Hence his absence today. And out on the left, we're going to bring in Lincourt Joseph, I think, for Osorio. Just to get two of our quickest players in the side on off the bench against a tiring Forge side. I think we can maybe cause them some problems in the wide areas. That's definitely what I would like to see in the remainder of this game. 13 minutes left. I'm going to make our last change here. I'm going to bring in Deshaies for Marshall, who is struggling a little bit with fitness. His last action is going to be to take the free kick, which is saved. But, uh, well, Deshaies, he's listed as our key player. I do want to start betting him into the first team a little bit more. And with us pulling away in the league, it's perhaps an opportunity to do that without a massive amount of consequence if it doesn't work out. I do feel like when we have brought him on off the bench, he hasn't set the world alight. But maybe we need to start him a few more times before we really start to judge him. It hasn't been the most convincing of wins here. It kind of goes back to what I said at the kind of midway point of the game about the fact that it kind of feels like we're not winning these games super convincingly. Despite being on a great winning run, you know, it'd be nice to win by a few more and be a little more comfortable in our play. I guess the silver lining today is the fact that we have, as of yet... And I can't speak too soon, but as of yet, we've we've not conceded. And clean sheets have been hard to come by. And defensively, I feel like we really have limited their opportunities well. And I feel like with Tenguir on the ball now, we can, we can breathe a sigh of relief. We are going to get a clean sheet. We are going to beat Forge here 1-0. It's a great result that puts us right up there in the table. And whilst our spot now in the playoffs is not guaranteed, given how far we are ahead, given the games that we have in hand... I feel like I can say with confidence, let's come back for the end of season playoff and see how we get on. You can see here, uh, Marshall is making good progress, learning to play central midfielder in that deeper role. That is good news there. Hopefully his development is going to continue. And uh, well, that money from the yard deal is pretty nice money, isn't it? £235,000. We can definitely make something work with that. You can see we have set a, uh, a new record of six games won consecutively which is uh, very, very nice. Of course, our previous unbeaten run included some draws. Since we got knocked out, we've come back with a vengeance and looked very, very solid. Hopefully, we're going to see that throughout the tail end of this season now. So anyway, that is going to wrap things up for today. As I said, if, the, if we get to a point where we start massively bottling it and the last few games do have some significance, we may be back for those. But I feel like given how we're going right now, I can say with some confidence that we are going to be around the top and probably in the playoffs next year, uh, not next year, next episode. And that's what we will be back for. So yes, guys, hope you've enjoyed today's episode. Do drop a like on it if you have. Nice little 1-0 win. Wasn't the craziest of results, but it helps us on our way. I'll see you again on the next one. And it is me, Jack. And I'll talk to you guys in a bit. I'm out. <laughs>